Are you waiting for one of the Ryzen R5 or R3 processors? Curious how they might compare respectively to their Intel counterparts? Or are you just tired of waiting and are thinking about getting one of the R7 series? Well, let's talk about that. Hey, what's up guys? My name is JD from JD Tech Gear and welcome back to the channel where we talk about tech reviews, unboxings, PC passion, and setup design. So if you're into that sort of thing, consider checking out the rest of the channel and subscribing. So when it comes to the Ryzen lineup, the R5 and the R3 series are going to be late to the party. AMD has claimed that they're going to release sometime in Q2 of 2017, which means anytime between April and June, but hopefully April. The R7 series is ready to launch on March 2nd with their 8-core 16-thread enthusiast CPUs, but what can we expect from the R3 and the R5 series and how they'll perform? And is it even worth more of a wait? Well, most likely. So a lot of people might feel tired and they might want to splurge on one of the R7 CPUs when their original intentions were going with one of the lower tiers perhaps with the R5 or maybe with the R3s. But as we have seen in some of the benchmarks of the R7 series, the architecture of the CPUs has proven to have a major performance and efficiency gain over their previous generations. And we can expect some sort of similar jump in performance with the R5s and the R3s. So the R7 series has turned a lot of heads and has even gotten Intel's attention for their price for performance. With that being said, $330 at base price for the R7 series can still be a decent chunk of change for some people. But of course, we've been waiting in intense anticipation for what these Ryzen CPUs would be capable of. But if you're on that line between purchasing an R5 and R7, here are some things to consider if you should wait or not. So the R5 and the R3 series are going to be priced under $300 while also most likely sporting high performance to their price equivalent Intel CPUs. While there are very few benchmarks of these Ryzen tiers, specifically the R5 and the R3, the 1600X has some leaked benchmarks that are definitely worth considering. At $259, the 1600X scored a single-threaded core performance of 146 on Cinebench, while the 6800K, its direct competition in terms of cores and threads, scored a 150, and the 6850K scored a 152 at base clock speed. Keep in mind, the 6800K is around $440, and the 6850K is around $620, and run at a slightly higher base clock speed. Single core performance is still incredibly important, and is something AMD has suffered from over the past years. With benchmarks aside, the prices of the R5 and the R3 series are incredibly competitive with their core to thread count and power efficiency. As compelling of a narrative that R7 series is telling, the R5 and the R3 processors can be the same, if not even more interesting of a story to consumers since they are targeted towards the mainstream and more affordable. Another thing to consider is wait to see how the R7 performs. With more reviews and benchmarks from more sources, including me, as I'll most likely be doing an R7 build myself, brand new CPUs and chipsets come with a lot of bugs and kinks usually that take some time to straighten out. So having that extra time to wait for the R5 and the R3 can prove to be a good thing for a potentially smoother launch. Of course, every situation is unique. And if you need a PC right now, and you need the performance and R7 have the money to do so, then yeah, of course, you should go with it. As far as wanting to pre-order that or wait for some reviews to come out, that's completely up to you. Personally, I would wait for some reviews. But if you don't need all that horsepower and don't need a PC right away, then I would personally wait for the R5 or the R3. The outlook seems to be pretty promising with the kind of price for performance that the R7 has gauged for its tier of CPUs. Also, six cores and 12 threads, even four cores with eight threads is a high thread count and has the potential to deliver good performance for gaming and even video rendering. Even the R3s with four cores is plenty for gaming. In the end, of course, it's your decision, but those are some of the things to consider if you're stuck on the line between purchasing an R7 chip versus an R5 or even an R3. But even if you are looking at an R3, you're most likely not going to be interested in the R7, but yeah, I'm still addressing that if you are. The way it can help save a few bucks, still get admirable performance, and possibly save some of the headaches when a new chip and socket releases. So those are some of the things that you should consider and hopefully gives you some insight about that sort of perspective. So I hope this helps you guys out. If you're on the line between purchasing an R5 and R7, waiting or not worth the wait, just let me know in the comments what you think about that below. And like the video if you liked it, disliked if you didn't. So if you guys haven't already, consider subscribing to the rest of the channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and I will catch you guys next time.